Hello everybody, welcome to the start of a new vlog. Today is Friday, the sun is shining, it is the weekend, so this is gonna be a little spend the weekend with me video. So for any of you gardening enthusiasts out there, I have taken a very exciting delivery today. And here it is, it's my 2024 David Austin Roses order. I am very excited for the rose that I ordered this year. I only got one from David Austin itself. I actually bought two roses this year. Both of them are David Austin, but one of them is discontinued from David Austin, but I found it elsewhere. Anyway, let's unbox this together and I will show you what I got. Okay, it's gonna be hard to get this one out because this variety in particular, it's not gonna look like much right now, but just you wait, come summer, this is going to be a beautiful blooming rose. This is a bare root rose that I ordered from David Austin, um, and the variety is called Munstead Wood. And the reason I say it's gonna be difficult to get it out of the box, I don't know if you can see. Munstead Wood rose is known to be a thorny monster. It is incredibly thorny, but it is a David Austin classic and I could not go without having it in my collection. And this is actually a really special rose. Um, depending on how long you've been following me, you may know that I had a soul pet, a sweet, uh, well, sweet to me, but not sweet to other people. She was very spicy, shall we say, kitty named Mika. She was my everything, she was my soul pet, and she unfortunately died from a mast cell tumor um, a couple years ago, nearly two years ago, about a year and a half. And this is the rose I decided I wanted to get in her honor, to plant in her honor, so I'm going to plant this one as like Mika's rose. It's, it's a dark colored rose, it's like a really deep, rich, burgundy, purpley red. It's really outside of the norm of the colors that I usually get. And it's also, as I mentioned, incredibly thorny. So I think it's like this spicy, sweet, like this beautiful but very thorny rose is like a perfect homage to um, my favorite pet and I miss her so much, but this will be a lovely remembrance of her I'm really excited to have it in my collection because I know David Austin is Discontinuing this rose in the UK. They have not discontinued it in the US as of yet But who knows, you know, David Austin does discontinue roses pretty regularly as they breed like roses that have better disease resistance and more floriferousness. That's my little gardening haul. I'm very excited. Um, bare roots need to be planted pretty quickly upon arrival. So really I need to get this out and get it hydrating really soon. Like I'll probably put it in our sink to rehydrate the rose. Um, and then I need to get it planted up this weekend for sure. So it's probably gonna go into a pot for now, I think. I'm very quickly running out of ground space in my gardens. Um, I have two, in case you didn't know, one that's at my actual residence and one that is at my sister-in-law's residence. Uh, and so I garden at both of those locations. So that's my very exciting gardening delivery. I'm really looking forward to the weekend ahead. We're going to be doing a little bit of gardening. We're going to be doing some sewing. We're going to be out and about in New York City. You know, all the usual things you can expect. And I will of course be taking you everywhere with me. So let's get into the vlog. All right, it's time. I'm making a new muslin of my pant block right now. Um, for my pattern making class, I've perfected the bodice block, but now, do I have everything I need? I think so. Um, but now I want to perfect the pant block. So I'm sewing up my second muslin. I've sewn one already, made some pattern corrections, hoping that this one is the right one. We'll see. Hello everybody. I am in the sewing room working on a muslin of my pant block right now, which is really frustrating me because I have thought I had the solution, cut out a new pair, and that was not the solution, so yeah. <laughs> so now I'm unpicking this to see if my new theory of lengthening the back crotch curve will solve the drag lines that I have behind my knees. We shall see. Andrew 
and I are in Carroll Gardens right now. We are walking to dinner at, what's the name of the place? I keep forgetting. Uh, Big Tiny or Big Tiny. Good morning, guys. Today is Saturday, crafty day ahead of us. Today I'm really gonna focus on working on my coat. Uh, I have decided I am going to cut out a lining. I was really unsure about it for a long time. Um, I can get it on just fine. Hong Kong seam finishings would have taken, it's not out of laziness, but Hong Kong seam finishes I think would have taken honestly longer and in some places on the coat, especially around the shoulders where there's like the cape that's set into the shoulders and with the sleeve, in some places um, I'm not sure that my machine could handle, even though it's a Bernina, I love my machine, but I'm not sure my Bernina could handle doing Hong Kong seam finishes on some of those thicknesses. I think this is not the coat to do a Hong Kong seam finish for an unlined uh, look, but eventually I really would like to do that. So I'm gonna cut out a lining. Luckily for me, I had in my stash, had quite a few selections of Bemberg Rayon. This is my lining of choice. Typically it's very wrinkly, so I'll need to, uh, press this first. Bember Grand is often my choice for linings just because it's quite affordable and it's also like a nice fabric. It still breathes uh, unlike like a polyester would. So I really, really like Bember Grand for that reason and it's also quite affordable. So I have a cut here that's two yards from Blackbird Fabrics and I also have a two yard uncut swath from mood basically matching i would say the blackbird fabric one is a little bit heavier but not not by much so if i don't have enough for one i will be able to use the other uh so yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and get started on cutting that lining i've really kind of decided lately that jackets and coats are one of my favorite things to make they're just so satisfying and i love the mixture of more like detail sewing with like other less intense sewing with coats um, and the payoff is so big because you wear them a lot you know so there's like a lot of return on your time investment for it and your financial investment so i really just kind of come to decide that i really like coat and jacket sewing um, mostly from like the process standpoint i really enjoy making them So far I have gotten ready, got my coffee, we're headed to the subway, and we're headed to the Chelsea Flea Market. Let's go! Chelsea Flea Market. Let's go take a look. How cute is this? It'd be perfect for the Western trend right now. $38, consider that one. Look at that stunning burgundy leather coat. 
Just saw this coat. It's made out of polyester, but I like the color a lot. didn't have quite as many vendors as I was expecting. I did pick up a few goodies. I'll show you my little haul when I get back home. But for now, I'm thinking about heading south and going to the Ludlow Flea Market, which is another one that's like on the Lower East Side area. And we'll see if we can find any treasures over there. just finished up at the Ludlow Flea. It was pretty small. It was all clothing and it was actually pretty well curated. It just there wasn't a whole lot there. There are some vintage stores in the area so I think I'm gonna check out at least one while I'm here and then I'll probably head home after that. Let's check out the Reformation vintage store. The color is not exactly my thing, but this is so cute. I love the little embroideries on it. Just a good idea to file away for future. market shopping and I wanted to show you what I got so at the Chelsea flea market I think I showed you a clip of me looking at it but I found this really adorable uh, leather vest it is actual leather um, and it has the sweetest little embroideries on it these flower embroideries and Western things are kind of a fashion trend right now so I thought it would be a fun way to buy into the trend and try a like piece in my wardrobe so I think this is going to be really cute for summer especially I'm looking forward to styling that with like some jeans and maybe some more boho style sunglasses and kind of like wavy hair I think that would be very cute so this is my most exciting piece I think and then I also found I just showed these to Andrew and he thinks they are absolutely hideous but <laughs> statement jewelry I found these earrings and then I also found can't show you both at the same time I found these earrings these are clip-ons so my plan is to actually clip off the clip-on part and then get some like regular pierced earring backs and like uh, super glue that to the back instead so that they're more secure really excited about my finds thoughts in general the Chelsea flea market I've been to that one before and it's usually a lot more vendors than what I saw today I think because it's been very rainy this weekend and it's still cold um, it was nice today but because it's been so rainy I think that probably deterred some of the vendors today Ludlow flea was like very very small very small it was clothing only they had like a gear good curation and like good selection but it was still very small so I just didn't see anything that I really liked and then the Reformation vintage store so that one is like an actual Reformation store but they have a vintage section in there as well and it was quite pricey like to me it's a little bit they have a whoever's doing the sourcing for it is doing a really good job like the clothing items are really cute but sometimes you come across things that are like from like Cato back in the day and I, I remember having a Cato in like this rural town where I grew up in Tennessee and it, it was not $98 for a top from Cato you know what I mean so I don't know I just felt like it was a little bit overpriced but they did have a really cute selection I will say so those are the three places I went to I had a great time I'm back home now as you can see and the next part of the day is going to be so I got this rose on Friday it arrived on Friday today is Sunday it's a bare root rose which means I need to get it into the ground ASAP so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get uh, the sink filled with water to like rehydrate it we're gonna go to Home Depot and we're gonna pick up some soil and a really big pot so we're gonna go and get that now 
You ready? Uh, almost. <laughs> So it's looking a little bare and messy right now, and that's because there's no patio here anymore. <laughs> um, so last summer, there was an insane mosquito problem. Insane, like we couldn't even come here without being fully clothed from head to toe if we didn't wanna be eaten alive, which as you can imagine in the middle of summer is not that comfortable. Um, ripped up the decking to find that there was a lot of standing water underneath it and we think that that's where they were breeding. Sorry, plane overhead. So we're gonna be replacing what was this decking right here with pavers instead. That's the plan, I think. Um, so yeah, so it's looking a little bit under construction right now, but we've also recently, here let me turn you around, you can see better. At the end of like last fall, early winter, Andrew had some of his guys rebuild this front here because it was really like bowing out and falling out and we put in some landscaping fabric on the interior here so that soil like can't fall out of the bottom anymore which is nice so they like rebuilt this whole side it looks like really really good um i haven't done any sort of garden cleanup here like i said the mosquito situation was just so miserable that it was a no-go so there's a lot of cleanup here to do before the season starts and a lot of rose pruning to do but give it a few months and this area is going to be completely magical but anyway, I'm here right now because I'm scoping out where I might be able to stash a pot because my new Munstead wood rose, I definitely want to have it this garden, probably somewhere on the patio, but I can't put anything on the future patio until that patio is built. So I'm just looking to see if there's even a place I can put it. I think I might be able, if I push these back, I could fit it in here so that I'm not like blocking any of the driveway. That's the hope at least. And I do have a lot of roses I need to prune. What do you think? Do you think I can like push it this back and fit a third one right there until the patio is built and then move all of these out onto oh, the patio? Yeah, definitely. Okay. okay, cool. Yeah, so everything is, you guys ask me about the garden all the time, but you know, this is what it looks like. It's still very much winter in New York, so it's not very exciting or much to look at right now, but give it a few months and it will be. The roses are already starting to get buds on them which means i really really need to be pruning them i'm not late on it this is typically the time that i do prune my roses but we've had such a mild winter thank you climate change uh that they're already starting to bud up so we've come to little neck for brunch because uh, I think I talked about this in the previous vlog, but it's closing and it's one of our favorite places. So we're basically coming here as much as we can until they close. I know. I can't believe it. I'm so sad about it. Jealous? Do you want to tell them why you're wearing those? Um, so I, I bought a laser cutter, uh -huh. <laughs> and the safety glasses that came with said laser cutter were not safe. <laughs> no, that's the story in a nutshell. So he looks like a bro. We find out while we were there that their last day is March 20th, so we have some time to go before they close. I definitely want to go to a dinner one more time yeah. there and then we're gonna beg them for that fisherman stew recipe. Yes. So we finished brunch. Uh, now we're on our way to go get some soil in a pot for my rose and then after that we're gonna go to the grocery store. Today, but it's just too icky out here. It's raining and it's cold and I just want to wait until until it's sunny at least a nice sunny day 
to come out here and tackle this. But I did get Munstead wood planted, which I'm very excited about. We're back from grocery shopping. You you think they make me look like a finance bro, but I think they make me look like a old Italian man. Oh really? I, yeah, I'm going definite like guy in the side of the club being a creep. They can't see you by the way. Yeah. Probably better for you guys, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Tonight we're heating up eggplant parm that Andrew made for us last night, which was delicious. I'm currently slicing up some zucchini to do some sauteed zucchini to go with it. Zucchini. Mm. Garlic. Ooh, maybe this. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday. Andrew and I had our eggplant parmesan for dinner. We started a new series on Netflix. Um, and so after that, we just like, didn't vlog anymore so I didn't show you anything else and there's still some other things I want to show you by the by documentary series on Netflix that I just watched called the program fascinating very difficult to watch so just kind of take care and look up what it's about um, before you watch it and see if it's something that you'd be okay watching but it was fascinating and it's about the troubled teen industry basically and like all of these schools that um, around the US especially that people send their troubled teens to and what really goes on in these kinds of schools so yeah it was hard to watch but like a really good and important documentary it's a three-part series highly recommend it was riveting loved watching it I have a few more things that I want to show you like my coat progress um, and then a couple more things that I picked up when I was vintage shopping yesterday. So when Andrew and I were out, I didn't show you uh, because it was kind of like an unexpected trip and I didn't bring my camera inside with me, but our favorite thrift store, one of my favorites is called The Big Reuse. And it's one of my favorite thrift stores to go to. I wouldn't say it's a vintage store. It's definitely more like a thrift store, um, but they occasionally have some real gems in the way of clothing. We specifically love to go there to get glassware i don't know about you but we're just not like the most careful in this household one of my favorite sayings things are to be used people are to be loved not the other way around so like we don't keep or save things for best we use the stuff that we have and we love it and yeah we use it so we break a lot of glassware unfortunately so because of that we're always like looking for cool vintage glass pieces to like add to our collection or we buy things at thrift stores a lot and so I did find where did I put it is it in here it was in the dishwasher there was not even a matching one like I said we don't really care about that sort of thing we try to buy at least in sets of too, but I found this wine glass sort of thing and I thought it was cute so I got that anyway that's not the point I wanted to talk to you because I got two blazers while I was there and they are amazing amazing so this is the more exciting one it is a I'm not sure what fabric it is the tag says butterfly prestige sportswear ink are you gonna focus on that I don't know it says it's made in China and that it's dry clean only in 100% cotton. I don't know about you, but this definitely does not look and feel like cotton. So I don't know what this is. I'm not sure what the outer shell really is made out of. I don't really care. It's an amazing like uh, velvet burgundy jacket and it's insane. Isn't it gorgeous? Uh, I love it. It's going to like pair so beautifully with other clothes in my wardrobe. It's a real statement item. The color is truly perfect. I absolutely love it. So that's the first thing I found. And then the second one I found, another blazer, is this black Ann Taylor one. I actually don't have any black blazers in my wardrobe that are like an oversized variety. I have one, but it's more like a charcoal color, not true black. And this one is true black. So it's more like an oversized fit and I think this again will be a perfect piece to have 
in my wardrobe. So those were two more things I found yesterday, which is really exciting. So those are my new pieces. I'm going to go ahead and get started with my work day now, but I will chat with you guys a little bit later. Taking this little opportunity of a break in my work day to show you the progress on my coat. It is looking so, so good, I think. Oh, by the way, I put on these press on nails. I love them. They've got like this little mirror finish on them. I'll leave them linked below. They're so fun. I haven't had press ons in ages. Anyway, I did decide to line it. I cut out all of my lining pieces. I have assembled it. The, the whole lining is assembled here, including the sleeves. Everything is ready. The next step is going to be attaching the lining to this front facing here along the whole interior of the jacket. But yeah, it's like almost finished. I think the only steps I have left are to attach the lining, put in my label, do the buttons and buttonholes. So like this will get a button to secure it down. Um, I want to put, I don't know if the word epaulette is right, because I thought an epaulette was just for like a military jacket, but I want to put like the, basically this right here, up here as well. I just like the look of that, so I want to put those in. I need to hem it. I need to add the belt loops to the side and also make the belt for it, but it's almost finished. It's getting really close. And just in time for spring because because it is currently um, going to be 65 degrees, I think, today. Of course, like right as it was freezing this weekend, so cold that I couldn't even go outside into the garden. It was so cold. And now, like, Monday, it is warm outside, naturally. But I did just want to show you the progress on my coat because it's coming together and I think it's looking incredible. So similar to my inspiration. And I'm just really thrilled that I have, what kind of magic is it that we're able to make things like this? You know, it's really exciting. So yeah, and I think too at the very end, once I finish, finish it, I might take it to a dry cleaner to do like a professional press on it. Um, I could steam press it myself and I also have a steamer, but I think that taking it to a dry cleaner, they'll be able to do a better job. They have more experience than I will, and I've done that before with a coat project, and it turned out really well. So I think I will take this to a cleaner to get it professionally pressed so that it looks nice. So yeah, I'm really, really excited. That's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed, but before you go, one thing that I really need your help on. Chicago recommendations. Andrew and I are going to Chicago for a yearly trip that we do there for his hobby in a couple weeks. I would love your recommendations for places we should eat, vintage stores and thrift stores if you have any good ones. Would love to know about that. Please send me all of your recommendations. I'm not like super experienced with Chicago so would love any thoughts you have on that. I plan on doing like a solo like date day with myself basically while I'm there while Andrew's doing his convention stuff. So if you have anything like that, like a good brunch spot, lunch spots, dinner spots, stores I should go to, etc. Yeah, so give me all of your Chicago recs. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy my videos and wanna see more content from me, please hit the subscribe button below and give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.